Hi, I'm Evan Crawley. And I'm Travis Lazarzik. And today for Gridiron Girls, we're at Hope Field and Gardner. We're Evan, big rivalry game Friday night. Gardner is hosting Coney. Uh, obviously, you can see there's a little bit of rainy weather today. Right. We're hoping that doesn't last until Friday night. But uh, they'll play it by ear, and both teams will adjust accordingly. Uh, obviously, this is a huge game. You know, anytime you get a game or a rivalry that dates back to the 1890s, I mean, there's a lot of history. This is going to be a great crowd here this weekend. Uh, and two teams that are kind of in different areas, uh, Coney 5-2, and two, Gardner 2-5. Two and five. The Two teams, um, Coney's obviously going to go to the playoffs. Gardner, this is it for them. But both teams will be looking for uh, to win this game. Coney will be led by their passing offense, Mitchell Karen, Taylor Carrier, Reed Shostak, uh, and a whole slew of wide receivers. Gardner's going to have to find a way to slow that down. Right. A good way to do that, get into the quarterback with Jake Truman uh, and Andrew Duty Veyu. Um, Adrian Heath, also another player to watch, and Trayvon Horton in the secondary will have a tough task ahead of them. Uh, recently, we caught up with some of the Gardner players uh, to see what they're thinking going into this game. It's the peak of the season. Uh, I know that um, the folks in, at Coney are heading into the playoffs, so it's a way to, for them to really gain some momentum going to the playoffs for us. It's a great way for us to um, cap off our season, and we can call uh, a season like this a, a success with a win Friday night. Jake, what does it mean to you playing in this game, considering your father playing this game as well? Oh, it means everything. It makes it that much more intense for me. It makes me want to just work so much harder this whole season. How much do uh, records matter in a game like this? It doesn't matter at all. Just everyone gets so hyped up on the rivalry that just the rest of the season doesn't matter. Uh, the Gardner Coney game is definitely the most intense game of the year. Um, it's a really old rivalry. It gets everybody all excited, all hyped up. Um, everybody plays harder than they do all season just because it's Gardner Coney. Somebody who's, who hasn't seen it before, what's the atmosphere like on Friday night? Oh man, uh, the stage, the bleachers are all full, packed. There's fans everywhere, people cheering. Um, everybody's in black and orange or red and white. Um, there's people from the military, everybody's there. Everybody has to watch the rivalry game. It really means a lot and it's really intense when you play. It, it makes you play like really, really, you're really ready and you really, because you know that the fans depend on you. A coach mentioned he, he brought out a, a book documenting the history of the game the other day. What was it like looking through that book? Uh, it was pretty amazing because, I mean, you look back and you, you can really see the traditions of uh, over the years how many games have been played and how many games have been won and lost. It's pretty amazing. Now, while the Gardner players are certainly ready for this game, they're not the only ones. Uh, Coney will also be ready for this game. Uh, recently, we went over to Coney, Travis and I, to catch up with the guys in Augusta. I think there's been so many people involved in it over the years. You know, the history obviously started in 19, uh, 1893. So the families, the players, the coaches that have been involved, um, it's just there's so many kids and uh, so many adults that have been had an influence on it and been part of it. When you prepare your team for this game, what do you tell them? Um, well, first of all, you have to treat it as a game. You know, you don't want it to be anything other than that. Uh, you know, you, you anticipate that the crowd's going to be bigger. Um, you know, it's going to be a little bit more noisier. Uh, student sections tend to get a little bit rowdy. You get the bands going, but uh, for the most part, you, you know, you have to just make sure that you focus on playing the football game and getting the W. Uh, what do you tell kids who haven't played in this game before? Just to, you know, play every play like it's your last. You know, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, or a senior. You know, it's it's a big game. It's a rivalry that's been going on for a while now, and just to go out there and have fun. Uh, what do you have to do to, to beat Gardner? Uh, Play better. Uh, Max, what have these guys told you to prepare for uh, this game? As being your first time playing this. Um. Well, they told me to just um, play hard, be physical. It's a rivalry. It's been going on for years, and it's something very special community around here. Everyone likes to come and watch. It. See. Um, Elias, when you look at uh, Gardner on film, what are the things you're going to have to stop uh, to be successful? Definitely the run game. Um, they have really, they have two really good running backs, in, uh, Brad Weston and Trayvon Horton. And uh, Brad Weston is a very, he's a very physical running back, so you can't take any shoulder shots with them. You got to wrap them up a little low. Great, thanks a lot. Coney Gardner, it means a lot every year. Um, depending on who the wins get the boot, it's always a big deal. How much have you guys followed the tradition of this game? Do you guys ever look back and, and see? All the old uh, players used to play in this game. Exactly. A bunch of them show up in their varsity jackets. They tell us all the stories about what happened, how they won, and then you get to see players from like last year who come support you. So it's a great, great, great experience. 
Now, Coney Gardner is not the only big game in PTCB this weekend. Travis, another uh, bunch of great games this weekend. Yeah, some games with some playoff implications. We'll start with the game at Kaisfield and Fairfield between Mesolonsky and Lawrence. Another big rivalry game. Mesolonsky coming off a couple big wins, knocking off Brunswick two weeks ago, and then beating Hamden last week. They're probably the hottest team in the league right now. If they win, they can clinch a home playoff game in the first round. Lawrence wins and then have some other thing happen. They could maybe get one of those buys out of the first round. Or if they lose, they could possibly fall all the way to fifth. So some implications there. Another big one is Skowhegan at Mount Blue, where the Cougars can maybe get a home game with a win. Skowhegan has to win to get into the playoffs. It needs some help with a Brewer loss. So Skowhegan coming off a big win over Gardner last week. We'll see if the Indians can keep it going. Uh, and also, Travis, uh, some big games of Class C as well. Yeah, uh, Waterville is going to Madison. Madison is going to be in the playoffs for the first time in almost 20 years. Big deal for the Bulldogs, but if they win, they can secure a home game in the first round, which would be monumental for Madison. Uh, and outside of Class C in Western D, obviously some big games. Uh, Winthrop Monmouth takes on Miranda Cook. Uh, two games for the bottom of the standings. Miranda Cook, if they win, they've got the potential to maybe even get a four seed and host a home playoff game. Uh, Winthrop Monmouth looking to leapfrog them in the standings. Uh, and then, obviously, the big game will be Oak Hill against Lisbon. Uh, first place in the Campbell Conference will be up for grabs. Alex Mace has been pretty much unstoppable this season, and Kyle Flaherty is starting to look uh, much healthier for the Raiders. So Lisbon will have uh, will have their hands full this weekend. Uh, for all these games and much more, please log on to www.centralmain.com, uh, as well as pick up the Kennebec Journal and Morning Sentinel newspapers. That's it for us this week. Next week we'll be back to talk about some of the playoff games in Central Maine, and we'll see you next time on Gridiron Guru.